As Junpei walked into the room, a blast of cold air washed over him. Almost instinctively, he folded his arms tighter on his chest. What could he doing what he could to conserve body heat? Brr, it's cold in here. What is this place? Are you blind? It's a freezer. Santa's teeth already begun to chatter. Hardly surprising, the freezer was far too cold for someone dressed as he was. Lotus, however, was in an even worse situation. Oh, no way. That's way too cold for me. I'll freeze solid in seconds. Sorry, but I'm afraid I'll have to pass on this one. I'm going to leave the rest up to you. And with that, she ran out of the room. As Lotus left, June came in. Whoa, it's really cold in here. White puffs of steam hovered in front of their faces as they talked. June had already started to shiver. Hey, you don't need to be in here. You had a fever just a little bit ago. You should stay outside. We got this. No, I'm fine. My fever's gone now, but... Junpei had scarcely opened his mouth. Fuck everything. Lotus, what the fuck? In unison, they spun around to find that the door they had only recently come through... was closed. Junpei rushed to the door. Desperately, he grabbed hold of the doorknob. Ow. It was cold, beyond cold. Merely touching it was painful. The doorknob had been frozen solid. They quickly deduced that the pipe next to the door had ruptured. Water released by the rupture had hit the door and froze instantly. Santa shoved Junpei aside and pounded against the door. Hey, Lotus. You're out there, right? Open the door. She wasted no time in responding. What do you want? What's going on? The door won't open. Try opening it from the outside, please. Ugh, fine. If you say so. Hold on. Soon they could hear Lotus on the other side of the door. And the grunting ceased and they could hear light panting as if from exertion. It's no use. Won't budge. You've got more people in there. You figure it out. Well, this fucking sucks. God damn it. Santa was shaking like a newborn deer. June was hugging herself and shivering violently. Even Junpei, with his heaviest clothes of all of them, was clearly feeling the cold. With every breath they took, they could feel the cold working its way deeper and deeper into their bodies. Anyway, let's find a way out. If we don't get moving, we're going to be permanent residents. T two heads are better than one. None. I'm sure, we'll figure something out. Yeah, you're right. Let's let's take a look around. Okay, right. They pushed in close to one another and began to search. All right, let's get this searching shit over. Some frozen meat up there. Looks like pork. Huh? What's this? Looks like a tag or something. Jumpy, is there a slip of paper in that meat? I think there's something written on here, but I can't read it like this. If we try and pull it out, it'll probably rip. You need to destroy that frost. Don't think we're going to be doing that in this room. It might be a code. Alright, what else on the shelf? Everything's frozen. Doesn't look like there's anything else interesting. What about you? Alright, search. Dry ice? Can't you make that stuff cause an explosion if you seal it in something that's airtight? Explode? Yeah, didn't you do that in school? You should never underestimate the power of this expanding gas. Hmm. Junpei pick up the dry ice with his sleeve so as to avoid burning himself. Dry ice is just frozen carbon dioxide, right? Yeah, it is. I wonder how warm it has to get for it to turn back to gas again. Hell if I know. How's it gonna help us anyway? Oh, well, I figured we might be able to use it to get out of here. They were about to move on when June suddenly spoke up. Carbon dioxide sublimation point is negative 109 degrees. Any warmer than that, and it'll turn into gas. Any lower, and it becomes solid. Junpei looked at her, dumbfounded. How do you know that? Tee? <laughs> Despite my looks, I'm the qu- I'm the qu- Clean. Bleh, I'm the queen of random. Knowledge. The queen of random knowledge. Beautiful. 
Looks bad to mess up when you're showing off. Oh, you're so cold your mouth's going numb? Yep. What's white? You're just doing that on purpose, aren't you? <laughs> June giggled, did her best to hide her guilt. At least she was still feeling good enough to joke around, Junpei told himself. Come on, guys, don't you think that's kind of weird? I wonder why it doesn't turn into a liquid first. Santa was now shivering at an astounding rate, but his curiosity seemed unaffected. Junpei, however, was not in a mood to discuss science. He wanted out of the freezer now. It did strike Junpei as rather odd. Wait. Screw it, I'm curious. Why not? It did seem rather odd. Science lesson! <laughs> and he couldn't help but think about it. June answered. But it can turn into a liquid. Carbon dioxide turns to liquid if you put it under high enough pressure. But at one atmosphere, normal air pressure. It won't turn into a liquid, right? That's right. Instead of melting, it'll do what's called sublimating, sublimating and change immediately from a solid state to a gaseous one. See, that is weird. Water is a liquid between 32 degrees and 212 degrees. So why isn't that the case for carbon dioxide? June replied with an answer that stunned both of them. There's a kind of ice that doesn't turn into liquid when it goes above 32 degrees. I heard about it. Its melting point is 96 degrees. Ice with a melting point of 96 degrees? You mean there's water that freezes at 96 degrees? Yeah. Well, you could also look at it as ice that won't melt until it's 96 degrees. Water that freezes at 96 degrees. Ice that won't melt until it's 96 degrees. Junpei was cold as hell, but this was too interesting to ignore. He did his best to warm up his body by removing his arms and stamping his feet, then put the question to June. So what's this ice with a melting point of 96 degrees called? I heard it's called Ice 9. Ice 9. Originally, Ice 9 was, made up, was a made-up substance invented by a science fiction author. But recently, scientists have discovered that such a substance actually exists. Wait, hold up. So, is this thing called Ice 9, or is it water? Like I said, if the ice is over 96 degrees, it'll be liquid. If it's under that, it'll solidify. So, you, you could think of it as a polymorph of H2O. Here, think of it like diamonds and graphite. They're both made of carbon, right? But depending on the structure of the crystallization, the hardness and structure are completely different. So you're saying normal water and ice nine are like that? Yep. She wasn't finished. Have you heard the story of the crystallization of glycerin? For 150 years, the discovery of gl glycerin, people cooled it. After the discovery of glycerin, people cooled it, warmed it, and did all sorts of things to it. But whatever they did, it never crystallized. However, one day in 1920, some glycerin that was en route to England by ship was discovered to have crystallized during the trip. Naturally, scientists worldwide wanted to research this new crystallized form of glycerin, began asking for samples of the seed. A seed is, of course, a sample of the original crystallized substance. With a seed crystal, further crystallization of glycerin would be simple matter. However, something very strange happened. Not only did the glycerin encouraged by seed crystals begin to crystallize, nearby samples did as well. It didn't end there. After that day, all glycerin in the world began to crystallize naturally when cooled to less than 64 degrees. Before that, no matter how glycerin was, glycerin was cooled, it refused to crystallize. But once the crystallization had begun, it was almost like, how do I put it? It was almost like all the glycerin in the world had communicating communicating in some way that we can't sense. Junpei was honestly impressed. <laughs> in f it was, in fact, a pretty interesting story. Well, that's pretty interesting, but uh, what does that have to do with Ice Nine? To his surprise, it was Santa, not June, who answered. What she's saying is it's a lot like Ice Nine. What happened, I mean? A lot like? That would be bad. If water ever started freezing at 96 degrees, man... It'd be the end of the world. Junpei felt that Santa might not be treating the idea of the end of the world with proper concern. At any rate, we're not going to have to worry about the end of the world unless we can get out of here pretty damn quick. He was right. Junpei shivered. Alright guys, I think that's enough of that. I didn't think he'd get this far off topic. 
I mean, I know I'm kind of at fault here, but we can't keep screwing around anymore. Seriously. I might go by the name Santa right now, but I didn't grow up in Iceland. I freaking hate the cold. So let's get cracking, alright? We gotta find a way out of here. Santa stormed off, clearly doing his best to pretend the cold wasn't affecting him. Selfish, isn't he? Jinpei thought to himself. Still, Santa was right, and it was high time they got back to their search. The story of Ice Nine had him interested. But there'd be time to think about that once they got out of the freezer. Junpei looked at June, nodded, and resumed his search of the room. No good. I can hit it hard enough. I can't hit it hard enough to break it. Maybe it means more of a shock, you know? More of a shock. There's a water dripping from this pipe. Hmm. Looks like when the pipe burst, the water hit the doorknob and froze it in place. This water actually seems almost warm. Interesting. Hey, Junpei. Didn't you find some dry ice earlier? Yeah? There's warm water coming out of that pipe. Warm water and dry ice. What do you think would happen if we put that stuff in a sealed container along together? There's warm water flowing from the pipe. Okay. It's a thin pipe. This thing is covering something. It's frozen solid. I can't flip it over. I want to look at this again. Was there anything else in here? Whoa, that's disgusting. Combined meats. No. Okay. It's really hard. It's frozen stiff. Hey, June, can you say that again? <laughs> it's really hard and frozen stiff. Say it again. It's really hard. <laughs> again. It's really hard. God damn it. <laughs> Th thanks. <laughs> God damn it. Junpei, you perv. That was amusing. Something wrong, Junpei? Your face is bright red. Nothing, I'm fine. If that's hard, you can probably use it as a hammer. Yeah, good point. Maybe we can use it to break something. It's really hard. Oh, God. That's too funny. What are you? What are you? What are you? Shelves are covered. Frozen food, nothing special. What are you? You are rope. Cool. I have no idea what I can do with you. There's so much stuff in here. Why don't we take some of it out, Jumpy? A water bottle. Search. Water bottle. Yes, it is. So I'm pretty sure I have to combine this. Nope. Well, it won't let me. There isn't anything else in here that looks useful. Well, okay. Um. Give me you. Is I surrounding the doorknob? I can't? Okay. Swarm water. No luck. It's too hard. Can't break it. There's too much mist to see what's going on over the other end. Let's start off by putting the dry ice onto the water bottle. The dry ice is too big. Well, you gotta figure out a way to make it smaller then, don't you, genius? Oh. Is this what I have to do? No. Okay, that didn't make sense anyway. Um. Back. Um. Dry ice. Chicken. Yes. Alright, the dry ice is in pieces now. And... In you go. Alright. Now what? There's warm water flowing from the pipe. There's ice surrounding the doorknob. Not yet, Junpei. We're not going to get the result we want unless you can hook that bottle onto the doorknob somehow. It's got to explode right next to the, to the ice on the doorknob. We need to figure a way to attach the bottle to the doorknob. Right. So, rope. Let's just tie a rope here. Okay. Can we do that now? Warm water dripped from the ruptured pipe near the door. Junpei pulled the water out the water bottle, filled it with, with dry ice, let a good amount of water fall in, and then quickly sealed it up tight. The makeshift bomb complete, he tied to the doorknob as quickly as it could manage in the cold. Alright then, set. So, uh, what do we do now? We just need to give it a little, uh, tap. Bottles are already about to pop. 
we just throw a rock or something at it, it'll go off all on its own. Small a rock? A small rock. Jimpy looked down at the floor. Perfect. Scattered across were pieces of dry ice left over from the large chunk he'd crushed. Alright, this ought to do the trick. Put a sleeve down over his hand to keep from getting burned and grab the chunk of dry ice. It was a pretty good size, but as thick as a pool ball. He figured it would be just the right size. Alright guys, stand back. Actually, we should probably hide somewhere. Both Santa and June looked at him with new concern. Where exactly do you expect us to hide, genius? There isn't really anywhere big enough. Um... Yeah, there is. Look. Right here. We can hide in there. Jinpei pulled open the door of the small cellar. Come on. Get inside, quick. Santa and June nodded and jumped in the hole. Jinpei quickly followed. In his hand, he could feel the chill of the frozen carbon dioxide even through his sleeve. He tightened his grip, took aim, and prepared to throw. Alright, there it goes. Three, four, five. You're counting the wrong way. Oops. <laughs> This is really a sad excuse for a joke, man. Three, four, five. Sorry, dude. Alright, for real this time. You guys ready? Yes. Whenever you're ready, just throw the damn thing. Alright, here I go. Three, two, one. Dry. Jinpei threw the chunk of dry ice as hard as he could. With the same motion, he ducked down into the cellar with Santa and June, just as... Boom. Junpei leapt out of the cellar and ran to the door. Jumpy! The ice on the door, is it gone? Yeah, it's gone. The blast must have shattered it. Yes, alright, let's see if it opens. Junpei grabbed the knob and pushed with all his might. 